Hi there. In this video, I walk my students through the process of personalizing the front side of their laser cut jack o' lantern boxes using Adobe Illustrator and silhouette images they found online. It is assumed that they have installed Illustrator. First, search for an image you want to put on the face of your laser cut pumpkin. I recommend adding the word silhouette to the search. Make sure the artwork can be cut out effectively. For instance, the pupils in this face will not work because they will not have any support in the negative space. But the pupils in this face will cut out just fine. Here's my selected artwork. I verified with the artist that I'm allowed to use it, and my students should do the same. Be sure to save the art as an image file. Mine is in the JPEG format. If you haven't already, download the Jack-O-Lantern front face template from the assignment in Canvas. You should move the file to the proper folder and change its name to include your name. You will import your Jack-O-Lantern face into this file in a moment. Next, open the template file in Adobe Illustrator. You will see the thin outline of the front face of the Jack-O-Lantern in the top left corner. You can see the size of the box by showing the ruler from the menu bar or pressing Ctrl-R or Command-R on a Mac. If you have not changed the file name to include your name, do that now by selecting Save As. Next, click Edit, Preferences, Units, and verify that all the settings are in inches. Now I will place my pumpkin's image into the document by selecting File, Place from the menu. Then I locate the image in my computer. I'll put the image in an empty space by drawing a bounding box approximately the same size as the front face. Because this image was saved in the JPEG format, it is a raster image, which means if we zoom way in using the Z tool, we can see the edge of the image is a bit blurry. For 3D printing and laser cutting, we'll need to convert this to a vector image which means the edges will be well defined by mathematical equations. This will make it possible to manipulate with our CAD software. Illustrator makes this step a breeze. Here's how. First, if your artwork is not selected, do so with the V tool like this. Next, from the menu bar, select Window, Control, and press the Image Trace button. Then, from the menu, click Window, Image Trace to open the Settings window. Here, you can play around with some of the trace settings. For example, we can change the preset to Silhouette. We can also change how we view the results. For this project, I prefer the Outlines view. Experiment with the threshold settings. Note what happens in the extremes and settle on an outline that suits you. Show the advanced settings for more control. Experiment with a number of paths to get a more or less abstract outline. Changing whether or not a bend will become a corner probably will not affect your outline very much. Depending on the resolution of your artwork, playing with the noise setting may improve your outline. The lower the resolution, the lower your noise setting should be. Leave the method as a budding, leave the check mark in the fills option, and select ignore white for this type of image. Checking off the image using the V tool allows us to see that if Illustrator ignores the white areas, it will not generate a border outline around the image. And this is what we want here. Finally, press the expand button to generate the outline paths. And just like that, Illustrator has created an outline around my image, which is so cool. 
However, because the outline is blue and the image is black, we can't see the results very easily. So, press Ctrl Y or Command Y on a Mac to see the outline view. Press Ctrl Y to toggle back to the regular view. Another way to see the outline is to change or even remove the fill color of your image. Do so by selecting the image using the V tool and changing the fill color attribute. Here, I will make the fill color light yellow and then remove it altogether. To tell the epilogue laser cutter in our lab that we want these to be cut, we must make sure the stroke color of our image is black and the stroke thickness is 0 0.001 inches, like so. When your outline is ready, move it onto the front face by clicking on the outline with the V tool and manually moving it with your mouse. If your image is the wrong size, you can change its dimensions by pressing the shift key on your keyboard and then stretching one of the corners like so. Pressing the shift key while doing this is important to preserve the aspect ratio of the image. To finish it, you may want the laser cutter to engrave or etch your name onto the face. Select the Type tool and draw a box on the canvas. Enter your name. Highlight your name and select your favorite font. Change the font size to an appropriate size. Do not change the fill color. It must remain black. With the V tool, move your name into an empty spot on the face like so. Give your work one more glance and make sure the cut lines of your face are not near the edge of the box. Also, make sure your name does not overlap with any of the cut lines on the box or your face. When everything is ready, save the file and upload it to the assignment on Canvas.